Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Alright everybody, Zach here once again for Friday Night Flies at Bass Pro in Tawasin. Um, so I've been fishing a lot this week. We had uh, my buddy's wedding last weekend. Uh, we went up the day early on Friday and we hammered pinks. It was so much fun. Um, I broke my rod on the first one I landed. It was on this fly right here. Um, then my girlfriend got into about eight. She's never caught a salmon before on the fly, so it was a little tougher to keep them on. She lost a couple, and then one of the other guys that we were with uh, was chucking some gear and flies, and he was having success with the spoons and stuff like that. So Friday was hot. Um, Saturday was quite good as well. I know Brad was out, and he was uh, hitting them pretty good as well. Um, we went out again uh, on Wednesday. Um, I don't think we were there quite early enough, even though we were still there at like 8 o'clock. The sun was just coming up. Um, Guys had already had a couple of, um, on the shore, and uh, we fished it for a few hours. There wasn't a whole lot going on. So I think that first the initial wave has kind of gone through. Um, hopefully another wave comes up soon. And then we ended up yesterday, or Wednesday, going up to the upper someplace. Not really going to tell you guys where. And uh, we got into a few bull trout and stuff like that as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, fishing's been not bad. It's uh, picking up, and we're just waiting for that next wave of, of uh, pinks to roll through. Um, like I said, this fly right here was the key on Friday. Um, we are fishing some bigger stuff. I switched it over to some smaller stuff. It was literally my second cast. The fly barely hit the water and we were on. So once we all downsized, it was kind of game on. So we're going to get to this pattern in a little bit here. I just want to give a quick little shout out to Hook and Vice and Halius Outdoors. These guys make some awesome, awesome gear. Um, streetwear for all you fishermen and fisherwomen out there. Um, guys and girls clothing, which is pretty cool. They're local. Definitely check them out. So I'll post the uh, the links to their websites on the descriptions of this video for you. Um, so yeah, let's head on down and check out this little deadly pattern I've been fishing uh, the last little bit, and uh, let's get to it. All right, guys, here we go. So this fly is called the Borden Special. So if you're from the Pacific Northwest, you may have heard of this one. It's a popular cutthroat fly. Um, when I saw it, this is the original dressing. Um, that we sell here in the store. I just grabbed one out of the bin. Um, I immediately thought pink. So I even think the original with the pink and the yellow should be quite deadly. Then I tied up a few and um, swam it. And my God, this thing looks deadly in the water. Um, so it's a great little pattern. So that's the original dressing. This is the one that I came up with, the color combination that I was most happy with. So you can see a little bit more pink, a little more white. Um, like I said, it swims like, oh, it, it's a sweet fly. So definitely you need to fill, tie this one up. Um, so let's pop that out of the vise and get going here. So the hook I'm using is a Mustad 34007. It's a saltwater hook in a size four. So I wanted something with a big enough gap that was strong enough and something that you could fish in the ocean if you wanted to. I know spots like Furry Creek around here, you're definitely fishing in saltwater. Um, same with the Sea Run Cuddies, you can catch them in the salt as well. So. It's kind of a versatile hook, and this is the one that happens to be a size four. I would do a size six as well, um, just to have a couple different size variations. So There's just some 70 Danville, some 80 thread will work. The UTC 70 in black will work as well. So we're just going to dress the hook here, and we're going to get ready for our tail. So it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, you don't need too many materials. So for the tail, we're just, and the collar actually, we're just using schloppen and saddle hackle. So basically I'm just going to take from the bottom here, the super webby long stuff. I'm going to take a half decent chunk of the white here. It's going to be a tail material. And I'm just going to line that up a little shorter than the length of the body. Fine, seems to be a good, good spot to be. Somewhere around there. Now I'm going to do the same with the pink, so you get away from the marabou-y stuff. You can save that for tails if you want or whatever. So I'm just going to take some off here, about the same amount of the pink. It's more of a bubblegum pink. Uh, package says hot pink, but I've got hot pinks that are all, i got ten different shades of it. So it's almost like a bubblegum pink. And I've pretty happy with that color. So one wrap under the tail just to help crop it up. And I'm just going to come in here and trim the tail or the, the fibers there. 
And we're just going to wrap that up as we go. So yeah, like I said, we were fishing a lot of bigger stuff at the start of the day. And then uh, as soon as we put on the smaller stuff, but they started just getting hammered. This was last Friday and Saturday. So now I've just got some uni, where is it? I don't know, spools disappeared somewhere. Just some oval tinsel here, uh, medium size. And this I'm gonna tie in about a hook eye length back. So hopefully you can see that tie in point there. It's about a hook eye back. It's kind of where I want it. I'm just gonna tie it in on my side. This is gonna be the rib for the body. You can use wire and stuff like that as well. I just find that this gives us a nice little uh, contrast there. So for the body, I'm just using some Imi Seal dubbing from Superfly. I'm using it in the white color. Uh, again, you can definitely mix all this stuff up. Um, it's one of those patterns that you can definitely experiment with. Sorry about all the background noise. We're pretty busy today. So I'm just going to dub that on my thread. I'm going to try to make a nice tapered body if you can. Not entirely necessary, but start at the back here. And we'll start winding. It doesn't need to be too full. It's going to be hidden kind of by that collar anyway. Let's throw just a smidge more on there. And this is one I've done up in uh, a white and chartreuse combination as well. I think that's going to do quite well for the coho. We're just going to keep wrapping that up to about where I tied in that wire. Once again, just a little bit more. Alright, and that should do it. So don't worry about all these straggler fibers, you can, meh, you can cut them down if you want. As this pattern gets fished and chewed up, it's going to kind of come apart anyway. So I'm going to take one wrap at the back. One, two, kind of three or four ribs there. I'm just going to lock this down. I'm going to trim that off just to behind the eye. Just going to continue to wrap, just to help build up a little bit for our head. So there's an underwing on this fly, and it's just some arctic fox. This is some super fly and hot pink. Again, hot pink, hot pink, two totally different colors. Play around with it. You don't need much, you just need a little bit. Not even like, I don't even know, maybe half a pencil width, not much at all. Doesn't take a lot of this, which is kind of nice. Now you're just going to clean out that under fur. Then what I like to do is find all these guard hairs, the really fine stuff at the end, and just pull it all out. Now we got just a nice sparse little clump. And this I'm going to tie in so the tips are about at the bend of the hook, so about halfway down the tail. I'm just going to do a pinch wrap just to seat that right on top, like so. And that we're going to trim just the same length as the head. So, so far so good. I like this color contrast here just because when it's in the water it adds a little more depth to the fly. And it looks pretty deadly. So here I've just got some white shallop in just the top part. This I'm going to tie in by the tip. Cut off a little triangle there, a little tie-in point. Tie that in nice and snug. So for the white, I don't go too crazy. I'm maybe going to give it about three wraps. Let's see, it all depends on how full the feather is. So there's one. There's two. And there's three. So as you can see, the schloppen's coming just the end of that fox. That's exactly where I want it. Usually about two, three turns gets you there. Lock it in, trim away. And I'm just going to stroke those back a little bit. And I'm going to wrap back on them just a smidge, just so that they're all facing backwards. As you can see, we've got a little bit of contrast there. Now I'm going to take this hot pink, bubblegum pink, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go a few more wraps on this guy. And I'm going to want these to eventually be just a smidge longer than the white. So again, I'm just going to pull back all the fibers. I'm going to cut myself a little notch, just as a tie-in point. And I'm going to tie it in right on the near side. 
slowly building up that head as we go as well. So I'm just going to stroke those fibers back. We're going to get a few more wraps than the white. So I need about four or five. Again, all depends on the feather. Two. You can use hackle pliers too. Three. Four. Let's call that good at five. It's nice and full. Alright, two wraps there, just secure it in place. Trim it away there. And we're just going to tidy up this head. And we're going to wrap back just a little bit as well. We don't want too big of a head. A few more wraps. Just make that nice and neat. Perfect. Now we're just going to whip finish. So super simple little fly. And I'm going to double whip finish this. I do that with all my salmon flies. They're not nice to them. I'll even head cement it. I just don't have any here with me. So there we go. There you have it. The pink and white board and special. It's like I said, this is originally intended to be a cutthroat fly, but the pinks loved it. And you know what? I'll even uh, post on our Facebook page. Um, a photo of this all slicked back. It looks pretty cool. Actually, that kind of gives you an idea there. Let me just slick all that back. Turns into a little pink laser beam. And when it, when you strip it, it kind of pulses up and down. Well, it's an amazing action on this pattern. It's pretty cool. So like I said, we hammered them. Um, experiment with colors, tie them up in all sorts of different pinks. You never really know. Maybe add some orange in there, a little bit of red. Um, it all kind of works. So. There you have it. Let's uh, head on up and sign out. All right, guys. There you have it. The uh, the Borden Special, pretty killer little fly. Like I said, um, it worked extremely well for us on uh, last Friday. Um, I am up in a multitude of colors, very versatile patterns. Like I said, I've been doing them up in chartreuse and white, blues and greens, um, all sorts of different colors for all the different species we've got out here on the West Coast. Um, so yeah, just once again, shout out Hook and Vice, Halius Outdoors. Um, Put their uh, websites down in the comments. They make some wicked gear, some wicked local guys, and uh, some top quality products. So uh, give them a uh, give them a look up. Um, they got some cool stuff. So yeah, that's it for me for this week. Just the one. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. I may be camping, so I might not have anything. Um, I've got one little experimental fly that I'm going to start playing around with. Maybe I'll have time to film it and post it before I go uh, away next weekend. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.